Um, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to um, come and talk about the FIA data. Um, like uh, was mentioned, I, I, I pretty much predominantly work with the timber product output studies and the, and the utilization studies, but I'm going to give a little uh, talk for pretty much all of FIA today. And um, let's see. So um, to start with, it's pretty important to uh, realize that everything we do is kind of grounded. And what I mean by that is um, there's somebody that's been out on the ground and touched every tree that, uh, that we have in our database. Um, so I'd first like to thank um, all of our FIA field crews along with our state partners. Of course, a lot of y'all are in the room. Um, that go out and, and, and measure these uh, research plots and uh, collect an immense amount of data that's in our data set. Um, if, um, okay, the FIA program uh, generates a tremendous amount of data. Um, there's three different themes. The, um, we have a National Woodland Owner Survey. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a survey of the, uh, of the nation's forest landowners. Uh, we also gain an understanding by visiting the uh, primary wood using facilities of the South, or actually of the nation, uh, for um, forest products and, and utilization of, of, of the resource. Um, there's also a network of plots distributed across the nation uh, that we visit and revisit to, uh, to report on the status and the condition of, of the nation's forest. The FIA program's been around a long time. In fact, since the 30s, um, it's a, it's, the FIA program is a, is a national program that is, uh, that is implemented regionally over a course of about 3,000, 300,000 uh, plots. Um, like I said, we, we, uh, we have a database that's um, got electronic data back in the from back to the 60s and the 70s and um, we have a hormized data set um, okay so that it didn't go sorry I got my fingers all right um so as this presentation, we have uh, there's multiple geogra uh, geographic coverage and, and results of charts and figures, and I, you know we're back to the figures and charts, and and I'll try to uh, I'll, as the scale changes and all, I'll try to let you know uh, how things are going. Uh, one of the primary goals is uh, is just to uh, give you a flavor of what we can provide. Uh, and hopefully um, you'll come back to us with, with questions or give us a call and, and say, hey, uh, I like what you do there, and we can customize it more for, for, for your use. But uh, for this, um, I'm going to just give a snapshot and kind of talk about hardwoods, a little bit about softwoods occasionally, but just to kind of give you a flavor of what we can provide. And uh, start out with a, a, a look at the at the nation. Um, there's approximately 703 million acres of forest and woodland in the uh, in the United States, and about 62% of that is private land holdings. To the west is more um, concentrated with with uh, public land, public ownerships, and then in the east, uh, about 80% is um, is, is private own private private ownerships. Um, so this map here uh, reveals the uh, the uh, four stop groups across uh, the eastern United States, and um, as you can see, um, well, if you could see all of it, but the the yellow um, green kind of hue that uh, picks up is is kind of your softwood softwood areas and and the purples and 
blues and um, browns or, or, or your hardwood areas. Um, about 202 million acres, or 200, 202 million cubic feet of softwood volume, and about 465 million cubic feet of hardwood volume. So I'm going to uh, dive into that just a little bit and I'll, I'll talk kind of about uh, a, a few different species groups. Uh, we're going to start off with, uh, with just oaks. And um, this map represents um, a, a, a research plot. Each dot represents a, a, a FIA plot that has at least one uh, oak species on it. Um, so the, uh, the Quercus genus is uh, there's about 50 different species within within that, and um, as you can tell, it's it's the most most amount of species followed closely behind with pine. But um, the big key there is it's, it's even though it's the most amount of species, it's it's it ranks uh, a little a little bit further down the road when it comes into the number of stems. So pine takes over. Um, takes over the lead when it when you're looking at number of stems. So um, oaks also account for about 18 uh, percent of the above ground biomass and um, when you're looking at um, wait a minute yeah 18 percent of the above ground biomass but when you're looking at it in a, in in proportion to, to tree population, it's uh it's a little bit different. You can see tree population is only 11 percent. So some general hardwood softwood uh, volume, forest type uh, distributions. Um, the red arrows here are uh, kind of indicate. Um, Hardwood, hardwood types and, and, the, and the ones without red, uh, red arrows are, are softwood types. And um, the ownership, um, the, the orange side of, of, the, uh, of the area is, is public land versus the, the uh, blue side, which is more private. No, wait a minute, I have that backwards. The orange side is, is private and the, and the blue side is more public. And if, it's kind of busy, but as you can see, like Doug fir and some of the uh, western species are more public uh, public ownerships for those. So let's take a, a little more look at the uh, the dominant force types or seven uh, dominant force types for the oak for oaks oak, and again you can see they're they're closely. There's no real discernible pattern across the uh, the uh, the south the the eastern United States, and uh, as you look dig down a little bit further, you can this is just the white oak hickory group, and uh, you can still kind of see it's it's pretty much all over the uh, all over the eastern United States, and then uh, diving on down in and looking into that is just the white oaks, and um, as you can see, there's, it's starting to fine scale a little bit more what you would expect. Um, so when you look at volume, um, all volume across the, pretty much the eastern part of the United States, um, you know, you can see the intensities in, in the uh, very northeast and then up in Minnesota and, and, and then of course down in the south, but when you, um, start looking at just hardwood, um, you, you notice there's a shift north. And uh, that sort of makes sense. There's more you hardwood species or more hardwood area in the north. But then as you look at it as a percent of volume, it, it, it even it more intensifies to the, to the north. And uh, same thing for the, uh, the white oak portion of that. Once, once you just look at the volume for white oaks, you can kind of really pick out, um, you know, Missouri, uh, northern Arkansas, uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, 
and, and, and the Appalachians where, where the hardwood volume is located. And then um, also threw in, here's a long, uh, longleaf slash volume and it, I scaled it down to just the uh, southeast just because uh, that's pretty much where you find it. And um, you can see it down in the lower coastal plain. And also a look at uh, Loblolly, Loblolly's shortleaf volume. So um, looking a little further into the top 50 species um, and then the top 10 species. And you can see of the top 10 species, uh, about six of those indicated by the red, um, by the red arrows are, are uh, hardwoods. So, um, and, and of course, Doug fir at the very top and, and Loblolly, the most important softwood. Um, so we get a, a, another step along the way is uh, looking at the growth and removals. And, and this is pretty interesting um, with uh, So we look at the, uh, all the removals in the Eastern United States and uh, the concentrations, as you can tell, are, are, you know, they're in the South, um, Maine and uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Um, but then when you uh, start looking at hardwood removals, it, it changes just a little bit from all removals to hardwood removals. It, it, Less intensity in the uh, in the in the south, it it moves a little bit more north, and then when you add the percent of of uh, hardwood removals as a percent of all removals, then then it really intensifies uh, in the northern section. And of course, um, we also look all the way at just oak removals and and. Um, that brings back into count Tennessee and Kentucky. But then as a percent of our a percent of hardwood removals, it lines up on the uh, Missouri, or Kentucky, Tennessee. So uh, growth growth compared to removals um, in most states we're, we're pretty good shape um, we're um, greater than a one one per, uh, ratio is greater than one um, do have a couple of uh, I don't know if you'd call them issues but just areas of concern would be like Oklahoma and Texas as you can see their their um, their growth to removals relationship is 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 really a little bit closer to one um, and then a, a pretty interesting chart. Um, this is uh, along the bottom um, is hardwood species, the predominant hardwood species, or the predominant oak species, and um, associated uh, the uh, the the kind of the gray line is is, is removals, annual removals. The uh, the yellow line is uh, gross growth. And then net change is, is the is the uh, is the blue, and there's a there's actually a little orange line in there. You can hardly see it, but that's actually mortality. But but you can see these change uh, pr um, metrics um, and how they're uh, related. But the the big uh, the I guess the driving home point here is the big blue bar on the left and how how the uh, growth and removals compares to actual volume and as you watch this go up here's the top of the chart of of the volume for all of those species so although we have you know there might be some areas that we, we there is a a close relationship to removals and growth um, we have plenty of volume in, in, in hardwoods. And so here's kind of the same look for the uh, top four um, pine species. Um, kind of the same parameters, um, the, the growth removals mortality and, and the net change. And as you can see, longleaf is actually on the, on the scale there still, but 
when you put this into action, if you watch short leaf and then loblolly just goes way out the top. So um, kind of driving home the point that uh, there's uh, there's some some places um, that we do have some issues with uh, with growth removals relationships, but but for the in the big broad scale picture of the of the uh, of the data, the uh, there's a lot of volume. So uh, moving moving along, um, we had some um, size class and trends. Um, kind of look at two states for a um, for a an example here. Um, you can see um, large trees. Uh, Area of large trees is increasing, the medium and small trees are flat to decreasing, um, which those are your stands of tomorrow. So um, that's, it's pretty, uh, for both states, it's pretty much the, the, same, the same story. Um, just another way of looking at this, this is all uh, 13 southern states and are, have the uh, little red arrows with them, but uh, the other states in the country as well. And, and it's pretty much, um, other than a few, uh, uh, a few states over on the far right, um, the, uh, the, large, the large trees, um, there's plenty of them. We've had some uh, um, studies done from a couple of folks that are uh, looking at stem quality and, and Basically, again, we're going to look at the same Tennessee and Kentucky. They um, they looked at the number of plots, and then the uh, average number of trees per year for um, for the different grades of of timber. And um, so Tennessee um, was one of those states, and uh, they're um, the commercially important hardwood volume. And you can see. Um, Kind of what's uh, looks like your grade ones are, are are going back up as of 13 a little bit, but um, your grade threes and your grade twos are, are of course your 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 two um, high species. It's a little bit different than Kentucky's, and um, I mean you st you still got your your grade twos and threes uh, at the top, but you don't have that huge drop off. Um, so the initial uh, initial uh, findings from this is uh, uh, indications of trend over time, but the uh, quality and repeatability of the data is kind of questionable. Um, they've looked back; uh, a couple of folks have looked back at some of the uh, some of the periodic data from uh, the recent inventory to help explain the um, the increase in tree grade ones in Kentucky, but uh, you know. We didn't have that same result in Tennessee, so um, and there's really no clear, clear reason for this. Um, I guess it just so they kind of moved on to a a, um, a different way of kind of asking the, the question is you know what's being left behind. Um, uh, so. Um, this is more looking instead of just clear cuts and, and, and land clearings, it's looking at more of the par partial harvest. And uh, you know, most of all the tree grade ones are, are uh, removed and, and, and twos, threes and fours, fives are, are left behind. Um, kind of raises some questions there. Um, like I said, this is just kind of some preliminary um, things that um, some folks have been going through and, and we look for, for more answers, hopefully, if we can answer them in the uh, in the future. So moving into the uh, marketing utilization, um, it's kind of uh, more where I'm centered. Um, the uh, the look of timber product output from 62 to 15, um, as you can see, the the, the biggest. Um, thing here is the recession happened in 2009, 2008, 2009, and, and the drop off of, of timber products. 
But the, the, the biggest take home here is, as you, as you can see, we, get, we have a recovery effort going on with softwood and, 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 and hardwoods is, have uh, pretty much plateaued off and they haven't re really, re haven't really recovered any. Um, and if you look, kind of the same trend with the saw log output, uh, it, it's pretty much the same thing. Softwoods have, have, have recovered are starting to recover, and, but, but hardwoods have, re, have really not changed. They're just, they're, they're basically staying flat, which um, we've seen this chart already today uh, presented a little bit different, but it's kind of tracking the, the, the housing starts. The um, housing starts took a dive and, and starting to, to increase, but they haven't, they haven't made the recovery of. So then we look at the, uh, Pulpwood volume, and I, sorry for this chart, but it's, it's pretty busy, but it's got a lot of data in it. And um, if anybody's interested, they can, uh, I can give them a copy of it and you can look at it in more depth. But uh, the biggest thing here is, 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 is to watch the, uh, the softwood output percent line and the hardwood output percent line and, and, and how they have, um, although, the total volume has, has, has not really changed a whole lot. The softwood percentage of that and the hardwood percentage of that have really diverted from each other. And, and the, the softwood piece is, is, is gaining while the, the hardwood is, is staying the same or pretty much going, going down. And, um, and also the percent of uh, residue coming from other mills to these is, is also trending down with the, with the hardwoods. And, and they kind of work hand in hand, so they're probably um, kind of a direct result of one going down so the reason the other. Um, another thing to look at, and this is, is going kind of back to our, our Tennessee and Kentucky um, um, example. Um, when we had a, a mill closure, we got a couple of large facility closure points in time. We've, we've noticed a drastic change in, in, in the volumes for those going away from going away from hardwood and, and more percentage of softwood so that's uh, that's just a little piece that you, you try to piece together why things are happening and and uh, that could be some of it um, so that's pretty much our, our data I know it's pretty quick and uh, and I just tried to like I said I tried to touch base on, on a lot of topics, but if it spurs some interest in you and you'd like to look in, in depth at a certain area or a certain um, species group or, or, or if you're curious in re, uh, removals and growth, just, just let someone know within our section. We also have some new tools that are being developed and, and these are pretty um, uh, trying to put, FIA's always been we've got a whole lot of data, but we, but the way we get it out to folks, it's, it's kind of been uh, kind of lacking. So we're trying to get this data out there where folks can, can understand it by looking, uh, by looking at it. And some of these are, are some online tools. Um, one way, you know, this is a cross-regional uh, movement of wood in the north. Um, basically, you're selecting imports and you're selecting exports at the top, and it kind of shows you where the wood either came or went from. Um, so here's, here's my, uh, here's the southern, southern area's movement of wood and, and the, the chart on the, on the left over there shows, um, you know, wh what states, where the mills are located and what states they drew their wood from and you can, you can track imports and exports that way. Um, and, and this is the nation's look at, at, at that same picture. This was in the Forest Atlas um, publication of just where, uh, where all that wood came and went. And uh, as you can see, there's, there's a, a dot up here for, for uh, Canada. Well, now we have dots like over here and over there going to other countries as well um, since this, this was put together. Um, but this is really important, and, and, and this is, um, this, my little plug here as well is um, when you're out there, the, the folks that are working with our data, um, and they're looking for these mills or, or these uh, export people that send them wood out of the country, um, 
don't discount your neighbor because there's a lot of wood that leaves, uh, say, South Carolina and goes to, to North Carolina or goes to Georgia or goes to Tennessee or, or Florida. So that's also, that's equally important is, is, is if, if your neighbor's not doing uh, his due diligence, then, then, then there's, there's some volume lacking there. So that's just my plug for helping us out with data. Uh, here's another look. Uh, as you can see, they, uh, it's kind of animated. You filter out different uh, selections um, if you're looking for totals. And, and these tools, they'll automatically change the charts and the figures and the, uh, and the, uh, um, and the data that you're wanting, uh, and it's all determined on, on what you pick. You know, if you're picking a certain group of counties or a whole state or what, what kind of uh, look you would like. And so here's the, the Forest Atlas one animated that, that builds it kind of state area at the time. Um, so that is, uh, that's also in, in, in the group of tools. I mean, if you're only interested in a certain area, you don't get this whole conglomeration of a mess. You'll just get what, what area you're kind of interested in. So, so these are, um, I was actually going to uh, demo these tools, but it's a little bit, uh, little bit uh, unwieldy, so I'll just talk about them. But, so the first tool over here on the, on the far left is, um, is the timber product output tool. And uh, basically, if any of y'all have ever used our TPO data retrieval system, it's, it's kind of the same data. It's just, it's just um, staged in a way that's uh, it's a little uh, nicer to use. As you can see, there's the uh, picture of the South. Um, you can just draw a circle around a group of counties or select the state um, from your pick windows. And, and it, it automatically changes the figures in your data for your selected area. It makes it really uh, a little more user friendly, a little more uh, intuitive. Um, it's a really nice tool, I, and like I said, I've got some websites on the end. You can actually go in and and run these three tools. Actually, there's a fourth one on another slide, but there we can you can run these tools and just kind of. Uh, there's not a lot of data in there yet. There's only a couple for for the TPO, and there's only a couple of years, uh, but you can kind of see what, what we're working towards, and it basically gives you a dashboard. Um, so you'll select, but there's dashboards along the top that uh, are for like all products, or if you're just if you're looking at certain products, uh, saw logs, pulp, pulpwood. Um, it gives you a whole lot of uh, information. Um, the next one is is kind of a look at um, um, it's kind of a look at inventory the same way and. Um, it pretty much, it does the same as, as that tool, as the uh, timber products tool, but, but just with kind of inventory data. And then this third one is, uh, is it's, we call them like little infographics. It's like the, the latest data in a, in a format that um, it's a one pager. It gives you, it gives you the uh, growth removals, mortality. It gives you area volume. It gives you um, a lot of the data on, on one page and all you do when you select a state, um, you're, it's just going to come up with a one pager that you can print off, and it, it's a it's just a quick reference guide for the latest data that that we have. And I think that's going to be uh, eventually where you can select your your year of, of interest. So you would get that one pager. Um, and this is an, this is a. a, a Another little tool a lady put together. It's just um, land area, you know, percent forest uh, by growing stock and the number of trees. And you can basically do the same thing. You can select a group of counties, and it gives you the information for those individual counties or that selected group of counties. Um, so, in summary, uh, the uh, we, we have a stable timber base. You know, there's, the volumes are generally up. Um, growth removals and mortality, um, it, for, for, the, for the most part, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a greater than one. But, you know, in some states, some, some cases, we do have a uh, localized uh, issue of where they're, where they're a, a more of a one-to-one -one relationship. Um, the... the um, 
measures of change, you know, trend over time, is, is, is some of that due to high grading? You know, that's a question that's out there. Um, you know, and, and the reduction in, in small and medium trees, you know, that's, that's, that's questions that's, that's left to be uh, answered as to, as to why. Um, I have some folks in my office that, uh, that I'd like to thank that helped put some of these slides together. Um, and here are the websites. Uh, I do have handouts, so you don't have to really write these down. I've got a, a handout that's got this same stuff on it. Um, the first website's our national uh, FIA website, and the second one is our southern FIA website. And these two links here are to those tools that I was just showing you. So if you select this visualization tool, it'll bring you up, it'll bring you to those three, uh, three little icons, and you can select those and, and, and run that tool. And, and, and uh, I th think that's it. <laughs>